in the sunlit world of what he believes to be reality. But there is, unseen by most, an underworld. A place that is just as real, but not as brightly lit. A dark side. Bienvenidos, worldwide Fright fans. Welcome to the Horror Show. I am Jaime in Fuego, and this is a bit of special coverage that I am going to be handling for the month of October, guys. Yes, that's right, because last year, in 2015, I took it upon myself to watch all 93 episodes of Tales from the Crypt, and then three more movies, too. I watched everything Tales from the Crypt, at least as far as the HBO run goes. And so, with 2016 coming ahead, I was like, what can I do? Move the coverage to where it should be here on The Horror Show. And obviously, Tales from the Dark Side, which came before Tales from the Crypt, really just seemed like the proper thing for me to do. And so, the cool thing about Tales from the Dark Side, just to give a slight little bit of history here, is that Tales from the Dark Side was done by George A. Ramiro, who everybody knows, Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, and at this point, he was starting to branch out. He was about to start adapting all kinds of Stephen King stuff and become just a big, prominent director, more so than just with zombies. But after doing Creep Show, he was basically like, I love anthology horror so much, what more can I do? EC Comics, all that amazing uh, gain stuff. That was the Vault of Horror, the Haunt of Fear, even stuff that wasn't quite as shocktastic perhaps. You know, there was the shock suspense stories, the crime suspense stories, essentially anything that was Tales from the Crypt or related from that particular comic company before the code came in and just messed everything up. They inspired all of the stuff that was seen in Creepshow. It was like EC throwback, man. And so that is what this show basically became. It was like, hey, let's do a Creepshow TV series. Well, somebody owned the rights to it. So instead, they're like, well, let's uh, change the name a little bit, alter the mythology slightly, and continue doing it. Absolutely adore anthology horror, whether it was the Twilight Zone when I was a kid, watching those marathons when I was young, The Outer Limits, the aforementioned Tales from the Crypt, various others, even later players, you know, like uh, Masters of Horror, which was done by Mick Garris, you know, who did many Stephen King adaptations, and then there was even Nightmares and Dreamscapes, where they were doing exclusively Stephen King stuff. He had a hand in this show as well, but in the very first three episodes, things were a little bit different. They were kind of trying to get their footing initially in the Zero episode, and the one thing I have to mention with the Bueno, Malo, and Feo, as I always cover things when it's an in infuegotainment, even here when I'm crossing the streams with the horror show, is that something is gonna be good, something is gonna be bad, something is gonna be ugly. Yeah, that's right, and I always give a distinction, and sometimes it's a very tough thing to decide, you know, kind of, uh, uh, nerve-wracking to figure out, but I always do, and so there will be, of these first three episodes of Tales from the Dark Side, a good, a bad, and an ugly. Bueno, malo, and feo. And uh, I will not be getting to the Zero episode, the pilot, right off the bat. For the good episode, the bueno, I'm actually going to be getting to the third one. And this one is called, I'll Give You a Million. That's right, and it was directed by John Harrison, who actually was a protege of Mr. George Romero long before this TV series came into play. He directed tons of episodes for this. He went on to do a couple of my favorite Tales from the Crypts, including one called Isokilia, which had Tim Roth in it. Oh, it was so fantastically done. And so he was like kind of sharpening his teeth here. He goes back with Romero from Creepshow all the way to the original Night of the Living Dead. So. Yeah, pretty awesome to think about, but basic story, you have these two rich, slightly shady, just millionaire type guys who, you know, have their hands in some messed up stuff, and they are just having a little negotiation process. Hey, let's team up, let's do this. Nah, I've known you forever, you know, as they're rolling around in their limo drinking scotch. One of them eventually gets to the point where he's like, hey, I'll drop a contract, and if I give you a million dollars, you give me your soul crazy stuff, right? Yeah, I was immediately thinking about the Simpsons episode that maybe was inspired by this a little bit where Bart and Melhouse are, you know, doing a little soul dealing. And this episode felt the most like my beloved Tales from the Crypt, you know, which I watched all those episodes of last year. Tales from the Crypt I had watched before. The difference here is Tales from the Dark Side I never watched any of. Starting in the early 80s, it wasn't quite my time, but 
This felt like a Tales from the Crypt classic EC Comics type endeavor. After the soul selling goes down, and you guys know the soul selling is eventually going to go down. I mean, we have 22 minutes in this type of anthology storytelling. And I love anthology storytelling for the sheer fact that they have to condense that narrative and they have to make it compelling. Even if they skip over a few things, it has to be intriguing beat after intriguing beat after intriguing beat and then you're done. So it's very different from trying to develop characters over season after season or with a lengthy novel or something. Short storytelling, it's a very different skill because you have to draw in the audience and keep them for that small little bit and make every ounce memorable. And that is what this episode did. You know, the contract goes down without getting too spoilerific. It ends probably the way you would expect it to end, not in a good way for pretty much any of the companies involved, but yeah, I recommend the third, technically the second, because the zero episode is what I'm about to start describing, but yeah, the second episode, I'll give you a million of Tales from the Dark Side, awesome, right out of the Tales from the Crypt vein, the EC Comics vein, to be specific. So, to jump into our second episode coverage here on the Horror Show's 31 Days of Tales from the Dark Side, I gotta say, the very first one. It's called Trick or Treat. We've never heard that before as a title. We have never heard that phrase uttered before. This was apparently the pilot that George Romero wrote and he didn't direct it. He outsourced that to a guy who actually is in the opening of the film, showed up in all kinds of different shows over the years, but most notably Close Encounters of the Third Kind. And I've seen him in lots of stuff that's not even scarific. You know, loads of Woody Allen films, Deconstructing Harry, um, lots of Christopher Guest stuff, you know, I want to say he was in Waiting for Guffman and various other of those like improv stuff from the Spinal Tap guys where they're just off the cuff being hilarious. So not a scarific actor. He's only in the very beginning of this, but he directed it. And that's Mr. Bob Balaban. So he, you know, it's not an absolutely terrible story. It's essentially about this older guy who is in a smaller town, presumably. Everybody in the town knows him money. He's keeping tabs of every bit of it too. You know, from the farmer whose farm is owned by him to the people walking up in line and just trying to, in his store, purchase reg regular rations, you know? Uh, he kind of seems to own, not so much a pawn shop, but I guess it's close enough to it and, you know, everybody's paying on credit. So he's just like, every single penny, you know, saving every bit. Why do you think he got so rich? As he admits early on in the storytelling. And so, he has this bit where kids who have parents who owe him money, he's gonna essentially take those IOUs that parents have piling up with him and he's gonna hide them somewhere in his enormous home. And so these kids come in and have the opportunity to be scared by almost like a very half-assed haunted house that he's put together with, you know, oh, there's this vocal bit there, you know, that sounds like a, you know, crazy creature and then there's an owl here, real life owl actually, so credit to him for that, but probably get the money for it. And, uh, you know, strange sound here, creepy thing here, skeleton thing jumping up here. So it's not like something that as an adult would scare me very much, but you know, if I was a kid, it would probably be pretty frightastic. And so the big twist as the one thing to mention as we get into this second episode here, the bad episode, the Malo episode, unfortunately here on the horror show is that the bad episode even it embodied certain tropes that you need to have in any type of horror or just anthology storytelling. You know, you have that essence where you think there's gonna be a comeuppance, there's gonna be a cause and effect, there's gonna be a reaction, and there's gonna be a twist. Thank you Shyamalan for giving us so many twists that everybody almost expects a twist now, but I always reached back to the Twilight Zone, which was actually inspired by the EC Comics I was talking about earlier, and so Dark Side keeps that going, and the twist is probably the best part in this entire thing. So he thinks he's scaring all these different kids, and then something something happens. That I'm not gonna divulge more than that, but the the twist in the end is actually very well worth watching. So even though it's the Malo episode, the bad episode, I would not say skipping it. I'd say, hey, these are all 22 minutes long. Just watch it, see what you think. You might like it a little bit better than me. And the last episode here, the Feo episode, the ugly episode, one thing about Feo anytime it's in Fuegotainment coverage, whether on my separate channel or here on the horror show, is that ugly can be many things. It can be something where you're like, oh man, why did they make that choice? That's pretty stoops. Or it can be something to the effect of that was ugly, scary, gnarly, it messed me up, it was kind of gross or whatever. And so one thing that the new man, which was the actual 
true first episode of the first season of Tales from the Dark Side because there was that episode zero that I was just talking about, you know, and then there is this one, which was technically episode two, but it is the one that I'm designating as ugly as Feo for the sheer fact that the strange alcoholism and the problem which is presented here with Mr. Vic Tabak, who was on so many different things in the 70s. He was a regular on Alice. He was on a love boat. And this is a story of an alcoholic who is seemingly reformed. He has his job selling real estate, seems to be doing good, claims to have not touched the sauce for over a year. Everything is fine, but there is a strange child who shows up at his office claiming to be his son, and he's like, I've never met you in my life. You know, what the hell is going on here? You are, you are not part of my family, and yet, the mom accepts. Early 80s rebellious son knows who he is too. And so the father is the only one who was like, okay, I'm not saucing anymore. Who is this child? Why is he here? What the hell is happening in my life? And so it's just a very ugly dynamic that they eventually pursue. And it's a spiraling, you know, downward as Mr. Trent Reznor would probably say. But the performances are actually very good and it is utterly the saddest of these three stories. It's the one where you really feel for the protagonist, and that's not to say that he totally, you know, is effed over in the end and nothing happens very well, but it, it feels like he is being put in this position that isn't very fair, and, you know, he's trying to do everything right, and sometimes circumstances are weird because you're really thinking the whole time, is he boozing? Is this really his son? Or, in turn, you're thinking, okay, is somebody trying to play a trick on him? Does this wife uh, have an alternate agenda and stuff like that? So, that is the episode that it's ugly, and it was ugly for the subject matter tackled, the fact that it was really the most serious of all of these. And I think it might have even been the best. You know, I gave the bueno distinction to the I'll give you a million, but this actually might have been the better episode. It just hit right in the chest that much harder. We're gonna cover the entire Tales from the Dark Side series here in the month of October. So we are gonna go three episodes a day for all 30 days. And then on the 31st, we are gonna do the Tales from the Dark Side film, which also had three stories in it. There's a fourth wraparound that's got, you know, the trick from Blondie in it. And we're gonna do that one as well as a bonus bit on the midnight evening right before on the 31st, right on Halloween night. So that'll be going up at the end of the month. But I encourage all of you guys to like, share, subscribe, and most notably, comment. And if you wanna join me in this journey, that's what I would be most excited about because as I said before, I'm gonna watch three episodes of Tales from the Dark Side every day for the next 30 days. And let's comment, let's talk about the episodes. I'm mentioning it here, but I wanna hear what you guys have to say here on The Horror Show. I've been Jaime Fuego. You can always find me here on The Horror Show. Please like, share, subscribe. We are on Instagram. Facebook, obviously here on YouTube, and then I myself, I mean Fuego, I'm on every social media sector you can think of, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, checking out on everything that we have to say about the most fright-tastic stuff in all of cinema. So until next time, remember, the dark side is always waiting, waiting for us to enter, waiting to enter us. Until tomorrow, try to enjoy the lights, and remember, stay scared.